Well, we've been in a lockdown for almost a month now, and amongst the various things that COVID-19 has taught us during these trying times include, if virus doesn't discriminate, why should we? A lot of our work can actually be done from home. We've been consuming so much more than what is actually required and most significantly, the very important role that technology has to play in all of our lives. It's incredible how Dubai has transformed digitally and evolved digitally in just the last three weeks when it comes to banking online or schooling online or shopping online. And today we have a power panel who will be discussing digitization, challenges and Ramadan in the time of COVID. Panel, we have Faraz Khalid, the CEO of Noon.com. We have Eddie Maroon, who is a co founder of Angami, and we also have Ramesh Shahadi, the managing director of Facebook Mina. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. One of the trends that we've seen traditionally in the past is uh, Ramadan shopping starts earlier. So much before Ramadan, there's a lot of uh, buying happening. What we've seen during COVID is a lot of panic buying happening. So now that COVID and Ramadan has clashed, is that a problem for you? Or, or have you seen that trend continuing this year as well? It's a time uh, that we have. It's, it's unlike any other time that we've seen. It's unlike any other Ramadan we've seen. Uh, in many ways, um, our companies have discovered a new purpose, uh, you know, from being uh, providers of uh, things that people need to live a better life. Um, companies have become utilities for entertainment and companies have become utilities for the necessities of life. So in some form, the, the, the challenge and the role of, uh, of an e-commerce company of Noon is very different than Ramadan than it was perhaps last year or the years before that. I think uh, in many forms we're seeing people uh, yes, I mean, um, uh, human beings are a very resilient race. We we uh, we move on. We try to live the, the best lives we can. And yeah, of course, our catalog is there to support all of that. But uh, we're also seeing people um, really shop for the very basic necessities of life, water and, 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 and grocery and, and things that uh, otherwise weren't really uh, e-commerce forward or preferred categories in our region. I think in some form, this Ramadan is different from, from others uh, in many ways because there's been a massive shift in category uh, preference. Um, Ramadan historically has been about fashion, about beauty, about going out and about getting ready and about getting your house ready. Um, it's still about that uh, to a lower extent, but I think uh, it's more about uh, kind of getting by these extremely tough times when most of our cities are in lockdown where people can't move around. And that's the role that we see, see for ourselves. We, really believe that um, we have a role to play to serve. Uh, our boys and girls are on the front lines uh, in many ways um, doing um, the, the job that people um, you know, absolutely uh, need them to do at this stage. So um, our Ramadan campaign, our focus is really on, on our drivers, on our warehouse workers. We're uh, launching a campaign called Invisible Heroes. So this year, Noon's campaign is not going to be about sales or anything. It's just going to be about celebrating the sacrifice of those thousands of boys and girls who go out on the streets and deliver, you know, something as simple as water. Uh, I think uh, that's really how we're planning this. That's what we're thinking about. So considering Ramadan has always been a community event where, you know, people come together, they want to gather, etc. But Facebook is sort of at an upper hand right now, considering you've always been a social network, you've always promoted virtual gathering, virtual community, etc. So what is essentially the opportunity that you're gonna take out of this? Hmm. Uh, Shruti, thank you for that. And let me say to, uh, to everyone, um, uh, Ramadan, Kareem, um, and that despite the challenges that are prevailing, uh, we hope that all of the viewers uh, are safe and sound and um, and enjoying the uh, their time together uh, though apart um, and in fact uh, in that spirit Shruti we have established a hashtag called together apart uh, and it really kind of encapsulates our attitude and our view uh, towards uh, towards the season and towards uh, the natural festivities associated with it. Um, we think it's um, not easy uh, to change one's customs and behaviors uh, overnight, as this uh, crisis has called on all of us uh, to do in many ways. Uh, 
One, we've created a program called the Icons of Change, uh, spotlighting community leaders, content creators around what they have done uniquely and specifically in the spirit of being together apart, uh, how they've served their communities uh, in times of crisis, and to really highlight the great good that has emanated uh, from them uh, and the impact that they've had on their communities. We've partnered with uh, CNN, uh, again, doubling down specifically on this hashtag of Together Apart to reflect what uh, uh, and how Ramadan is being celebrated all across the region, firsthand accounts from people uh, throughout the region, around the world, on how they are observing Ramadan. We've also established hope feeds uh, designed to raise awareness um, uh, uh, on the wave of kindness, love, togetherness in the communities responding to COVID um, uh, leading up to and through uh, uh, the Ramadan uh, period. We're also doubling down on something called the month of good. Uh, and it's a challenge to the communities out there to do their best to be available for other people digitally. And then on Facebook uh, Arabia, uh, we've relaunched this page to be a central space for, uh, uh, for expression of all kinds of communities across the region, particularly artists, musicians, creators, designers, uh, performers, um, uh, to express their art um, and their skill and their talent on our page. So one thing that's made Angami different from Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, etc., is that you've given a lot of importance to local and cultural nuances. I think this becomes very important right now at, at the time of Ramadan and at any festival, for example. So do you see that as something that people want or are demanding as, as consumers? Uh, clearly, part of our positioning is that we're the local player. We're designed for this particular part of the world. And whatever we do, be it in the experience or UI or curation, or all our strategy is around remaining local because that's our differentiation. We're not catering for the whole world. We're catering for this particular user who has certain needs and certain habits and certain you know, cultures, etc. And Ramadan is at the core of this because during this month, um, as we know, many uh, Muslims do not or stop somehow listening or consuming music and they go back to more of spiritual content, religious content. And this is where we somehow transform the experience for those who want to, to become more Ramadan uh, uh, oriented. One of the main things we do, for instance, is that uh, the home page you have a filter whereby you can filter out international arabic music or have both we add this third filter that is for ramadan content only so the whole experience will become ramadan oriented and you will not see any other music content in this particular month 